Leticia, it's great to have you as our special guest this morning. And we'll be talking a little bit about art and, and how art can be healing and how it can be prophetic and, and the power of art. And especially this Black History Month, of course, we'll be talking about Black art. But before we do that, maybe you can, you can describe a little bit, um, how would you describe the, the art you do? Um, well, I normally describe it by saying that I paint portraiture uh, on textiles. So I mix quilts with figurative work. And that's also how we met. I remember uh, I, you were working in your parents' driveway, working on frames, and and uh, I was thinking you were I was thinking you were mounting canvases, and then I looked closer, and it was and well, like you said, it was oops, it was uh, quilts. So I, I thought, what what's going on there? So I walked over <laughs> and we started this conversation, and and, yeah, yeah. and then we got to know one another. Yeah, so, yeah. so why why canvases? Why not canvas and why quilts? Um. Well, I was looking for um, a fabric, so I was really inspired by uh, this artist, uh, Njedeka Akinui Crosby. She's a, an, I think, Nigerian artist, and she would put portrait fabric in her work. So um, she basically from like a special event, either like a wedding or, um, you know, celebrating her mother's job, I think, as a I can't remember what her position was, but it was a celebration of her mother's work. You would have a, a photograph printed onto fabric and for just like really special occasions, it, it was very precious. And so she was taking those works and like pasting them in her, uh, like collaging them into her works. And I thought how, how beautiful that was that she had a, like a fabric, you know, that she could, you know, trace back a fabric to where she's from, even though she's uh, currently, uh, to my knowledge, living in America. Um, and I thought about what my fabric was because we've had, you know, a lot taken from us. So I had to um, ultimately find uh, a fabric that was similar and quilting was something that my grandmother uh, would have done to provide for her family. Uh, in the beginning stages, she was just using, you know, whatever she had, uh, she was really resourceful and found you know uh, old t-shirts or uh, little dresses that my aunts would have worn and pieced them all together in, in a quilt so you're you're really reaching back through, through the generations and you seem to be very aware of where you are from in the sense of who your parents are your grandparents are you is it fair to say that your art in uh, integrates some of their teachings and some of their presence yeah i would say so i I'm, i guess i'm trying to mix in because quilts were utilitarian but they were also um a way for women in the community of north preston which is where my family's from um, my mother's side um, it was a way for them to be really creative so a lot of them would like show off their quilts on the clothing lines and things like that and they would share patterns and um different colors or whatever so um yeah i think it's an a bit of an art form that i've kind of tried to make into my own um trying to keep a bit of the old and then make it new somehow that's fascinating and so what else inspires you especially from as as a as a proud black artist what, what else inspires you uh largely i would say my uh community. I think, the, I think the fact that we don't necessarily have much representation at all. Um, I, I, you know, I grew up watching uh, African American TV shows that were representing Black people. Um, and so I, you know, I was really inspired by those artists like Hinde Wiley and um, Kadir Nelson and the other previous artists that I mentioned. I didn't even think that it was possible for me to, <laughs> to you know, make art uh, on this scale. So then I was like, well, I want to tell my own stories, basically. I think you, you touched on something that really resonated with me. It is your, when I see your artwork, it tells stories. Actually, I, 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 was, I was looking at some of your work again just before as, as prep for our conversation, and I realized it's almost more than that. It almost invites to a conversation. Is, is that fair to say that? 
it, it, it sort of like a conversation opener? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. Uh, I guess the hope is that people see that we're just regular people. Uh, like everyone else, it's kind of like inviting you into my family or inviting you into, you know, my experiences. So you get a chance to just see what we're like. Everybody has, you know, experiences of getting their hair done by their mom or, um, you know, uh, waking up with wonky hair in the morning. Like everyone kind of has these experiences. I think they're, they're different, uh, you know, uh, they're in a different flavor, I guess, <laughs> on, on my end. But um, these are all experiences that we all kind of share. But at the same time, you also place them in a in a context that that is almost like uh, it makes them in the first place. It elevates it. It makes the the mundane almost special. But it also makes them specifically uh, coming from your community. Did that just happen by accident or is that very purposeful? Yeah, I'd say it's purposeful. I, I guess I tried to um, shine a part more positive light on my community because uh, oftentimes I, like I would, uh, people would assume a lot of times that I wasn't from here um, and then they would treat me one way. And then when they found out that I was from here, I get treated another. And I found that to be really interesting. And so then I, would, um, you know, I guess I, I started not to ask around, but I started to figure out that people <laughs> didn't really know that we existed. And if they did, it was in a negative context because of what they heard on, you know, the news or something like that, um, where they're only getting a glimpse of, of like a really bad day in someone's life, you know, in the community as opposed to what we're actually like. So, um, yeah. Doesn't want to do like a positive spin. When well, you just said the people didn't uh, were, were assuming that you were not from here, do you mean that they were not even aware of that there's a black population here? Yeah, that I think that um, I used to have dreadlocks as well, um, and uh, or I'd wear like a head wrap or something like that, uh, and they would always assume that I was from away, that I was never from, <laughs> from here. Uh, but then there also were people that had no idea um, that that we even existed or that our history went back as far as it does. I used to work at the um, uh, Black Culture Center of Nova Scotia and uh, people would come in there all the time from here and they were like, I didn't even know the history. I, I had no you know, context, I guess. So. That's, that's painful. It is. <laughs> It is. We've been here for like over 400 years, or there's been a black presence in Nova Scotia for over 400 years. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we uh, this morning scripture reading was was about uh, Jesus uh, giving sight to a person who was born blind, and I'm I'm wondering in the context of of art, if you feel that art can help people see differently, or just mm -hmm. see. Period. And I, I, I take your time for when that's a deep question. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, I think it does. I, I feel like I've kind of answered this in a way, but. Um, yeah, like it, it definitely does give a sort of like a window to my life or my experience as an African Nova Scotian woman. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I think there are so many ways that I guess for my people, it can provide healing as well. I think maybe it's something that I focus on a lot is, uh, having them see themselves in, uh, a gallery space and having their, you know, people that look like them or people that are familiar, having that reflected back is really powerful um the comments that i've received or um you know people coming back and just being like i'm you know I, or someone else that's not even from the community i had someone say to me i know these people you know that was to me a, a really big compliment um, and they're not even from the community or you know black so i, I was like this is really amazing that uh yeah 
work can do that. So you, you experience that your art and art in general can be an eye opener and, and start a conversation like we just talked about. It actually starts a conversation and you find your, you find your common humanity and, and you learn. And I, I love what you said about that it, it works both ways. It's not just from, from the black population to the white. It's also, um, it can be healing um, for, for, uh, of, of some trauma that, that, is, that was experienced. Uh, yeah yeah wow. absolutely it's it is yeah <laughs> it's 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 hard to i guess dig up trauma but uh yeah you can definitely s touch on stuff and 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 create some works that uh hopefully start some deeper conversations yeah yeah do you see yourself um holding this course for a while you think this this is what you need to do for now yeah i I've, I've noticed since i was a child that this is what i wanted to do and i've um yeah I've, I've, i think i've always felt like this is god's plan for my life to be honest and i i feel like anything else is is uh i would be doing a, it be a disservice to his plan for my life because I it would be wasting time you know um I lived a lot of my life I think guess in fear so I am now fully pursuing this dream and I'm really excited about where it's going are you also looking at collaborations with other disciplines other artists um I have yeah um I haven't I haven't really collaborated often um, just because I'm trying to get my footing, but uh, yeah, I have I have collaborated a few times. Uh, we just talked about how good art can be can be transformative in, in many ways and how it can how it can be healing in different ways. Um, now this is a bit of a personal question, but do you find has it been transformative for yourself? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say so. I started out just drawing uh, pictures like from photo albums of my family as like, I guess, therapy in a way. Um, and then going to NASCAD, it really helped to expand um, I was exposed to so many other artists, I think that it helped me realize what I could actually do with my work and like the power that art actually has. Um, so that that did kind of uh, transform me and change me a bit, yeah. Can you say how it transformed you other than an artist, it's, 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 as, a, as a person, if you, if you can separate the two? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that I, I think that it, in, I guess in the way that it, my thinking was smaller um, when it came to creating artwork. And then once I saw all the possibilities, it was kind of like, it just expanded, you know, the possibility. I, I couldn't even fathom some of the things that people are creating and it just lets you know that you're kind of limitless that you can, you can do just about anything that you want to do and like I said I was a very you know small uh, fearful thinking like oh I don't and now it's like wow like, I wonder what I can do over here and what's possible and maybe I can try it working with this and see how this works out together yeah. you know yeah yeah. That's that's a big deal. If art has moved you out of fear into being fearlessness, mm. that's significant. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a bit of a journey. So I bet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> say that. But, but yeah, it definitely has helped a lot. How long have you been active as an independent artist now? Um, since probably the end of 2020. So it's not that long. No, no. I mean, I've been, uh, you know, part time uh, before while I was in school, and then I graduated in 2019. 
Um, but I wasn't full time um, working then, no. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your insights and your wisdom and, and and also thank you very much for your art and the ideas behind it and how you share it and how you talk about it. It's it's been it's been wonderful and it's been a privilege. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for having me. I'm sure we'll meet again because we we just just before we t started this conversation we just found out that you worked at the Dean's Flower Shop that's which is where St. John's will be moving to very shortly so I'm sure we'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to come back and visit. <laughs> All right. That's uh, that's a deal. We'll see you then and there. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Bye.